Hello everyone, my name is Donald Ruken and today I'm going to show you how to compute persistence diagram using linear algebra. The method I'm going to present today is called matrix reduction. So it will be in two steps. I will show you first how to encode the filtration in the matrix and how to use the matrix reduction algorithm to get the reduced matrix that will give you the information of your persistence diagram. So let's start. I will start first with a filtration. In this filtration, I'm just adding simplices. I start with nothing. This nothing represents a minus one dimension, dimensional simplex. And after that, I add, I add a vertex. This vertex is a zero dimensional simplex, and I add another vertex and so on. After the, vert the vertices, I add edges. I continue building my filtration till I have added all the edges and I then add the triangles. And then I get the last of, uh, uh, simplicial complex. Okay. So the order of adding the simplices is very important because it's used to encode the information in our matrix. This matrix is also called the matrix of the boundary operator. So let's see how to build this matrix from this filtration. Here it is. Our matrix is defined as follow. Each element of the matrix, for each element, the rows, the columns represent the simplexes, represent the simplices in the order of the filtration. And each row of the column has a value which is either zero or one. The value will be one if sigma i at this, I suppose that I'm at the row, at the row one, if sigma i, I suppose that I'm at the row i, if sigma i is a co-dimension one face of sigma j, then I get a one at this place. If it's not the case, I get a zero. For example, for our filtration, we have this matrix. So let's see how to get this matrix for this filtration. You have seen that I have started with nothing. So this nothing is represented here, just the zero, the zeros. And after I add my first vertex, this represent my first vertex A. And since it's co-dimension, it's co-dimension one face, it's just empty. I just have one because this represents my empty, my uh, nothing, I mean. For B, the co-dimension one face is also empty, so I have one here also. For C, the same thing, and D is the same. Now here I have A, B, my A, B, I have this, a, B at, I, at the fifth position, uh, at, at the sixth position, I mean. For this A, B, I have two co-dimension one phase, which are A and B. Here, this one represents A as it's said in this, agro, uh, in this uh, algorithm, in, in this uh, way of constructing the matrix because we say that sigma ig is equal to one if uh, the sigma i is equal dimension one phase of sigma g. So since A is the second simplex I added and also since it's also a part of AB then at the second place, I will have a one. Since B is all, since it's also the case for B, I will have another one here. This represent B C with the same process, and this uh, is B D. Uh, this is A C. I mean, not B C. B C A C, B D, C D, and so on. So we have now our boundary matrix. How do we use? How do you reduce it? There is an algorithm for reducing the binary matrix. This algorithm is also given in the book. 
computational topology of Edels Brunner and Harder. So let's look at it. This algorithm takes our matrix and the G here represents the colon of the matrix. If two colon of the matrix have the same lowest one, when I, what I mean by lowest one is that when I can, when I come to each of the column, I can see that some of the column has one, some others doesn't have one. If I found a column that has at least a one, then the lowest one of each column just represent the index of the row with the lowest one. So for this, for example, the lowest one, the, the lowest one here will be one because the index of this one is one and it is the lowest. For example, for this one, the lowest one for this row, uh, the lowest one for this column, I mean, is this one and it will be uh, one, two, three, four, because the row index of this is four. So I have my low G is four here. For D, which is this column, the low G is four. And here, since I have for the lowest one here, one, and the lowest one here also one, then I should add the column on the left to the column on the right. And my coefficient here are in Z2. So when I add this one to this one, I get zero here. And after that, I have just a zero here. So this is no longer a problem for me. After that, I look at this column again, and this, for example, and I see that they have the same low G. So I mean by low G, the low for this column and the low for this column. It's one and one. And I take, I add this to this, and I'll get zero here, same thing, and get zero here. I come to here, for example, I look at my low G here, the lowest one, and I have a, uh, here, one, two, three, this three here. And for all the other simplices, I don't have another lowest one, which is three, with the index, with, with, which the index is three. For here, maybe I have this problem because I have this also with the lowest one index four. Then I will take this and add it to this to change it. And this will disappear, but uh, I will see that I will have zero here, but one and one here. And it means that I have this one and this one, which will be the lowest one. And I uh, and I will add this, this column to this column again, and this column will disappear. And I will repeat the same process till I will not have the same index for the lowest one. So when I repeat the process, I get this matrix. This is, which is called the reduced matrix. This matrix encode the information about our persistence diagram. So all the elements of our persistence diagram are presented here. Okay, let me show you how. Here I have this colored one, which is the lowest one of this column. In my persistence diagram, I will have to count this one, two, which will be in the X axis, and this one, two, three, four, five in the Y axis. And this point, two, five, represent at two, the birth of a generator of zero dimensional homology and the depth of this generator. I will also have the point three, six, and four, seven, that represent the birth and the depth of my zero dimensional homology. This one represent the, the, the depth of my minus one dimensional homology, which was nothing, because at this time you have something that was born, which was a zero-dimensional homology, which is also a connected component. And this will represent my one-dimensional homology that holds. 
So this, when we count like this, this uh, gives you what is on the x axis, axis, and this on the y axis. And this is the point of a persistence diagram. This is another point of the persistence diagram. And this is the last point. So in my representation of the persistence diagram, these are represented by dots. This one is not represented because uh, it, it doesn't really matter. And these are presented by triangles, red triangles. That gives me information about my one dimensional homology, the birth and the death of the generator of one dimensional homology. And I, I have my persistence diagram here. As you can see, you have three point, three black dots that represent birth and death of a zero dimensional homology and three red triangles that represent birth and death of one dimensional homology. So that is how we use matrix reduction algorithm to compute persistence diagram by using linear algebra. You can find this algorithm in this book and thank you very much for following this presentation. Goodbye.